that claim those truths every single day of our walk, that uh, justice is served and that mercy wins. I pray that those words will resound in your hearts every single day. Brother and sister, we come to the conclusion of this year, and I don't know, I think for some of us older ones, uh, we're, I, I don't want to say we're more sensitive to our failures. I don't, I don't want to uh, give ourselves all that credit, but I trust that every single one of us as we walk, you know, we look past this year as what we endeavor to do. Uh, we want to abide in Jesus Christ. We want to bear much more fruit. And I don't know. I don't know when we examine our lives, <clears throat> we look at ourselves, uh, every single one of us, how have we been doing? This is not a question to condemn you uh, in any way. Uh, but I pray that this morning, as we come and reflect upon this past year, uh, we come to look at the grace of God again. And it's always the grace of God. We always, always begin there. And brothers and sisters, we're going to end there. We're going to end there. When this life is no more, when time passes by, we still come in the grace of God. Amen? All right, so this morning, you guys get a, a couple of bonuses. Uh, besides Brother Kyle sharing with you this morning, it'll be Brother Chi Chen and myself. So buckle in, be prepared. It's going to be a long service today, okay? Uh, <clears throat> no, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, we're going to watch our time. We're going to keep it short. But I do pray, I do pray that whatever we're sharing this morning, it really would echo, it would really come into our hearts and ask the Lord to speak to each and every one of us. So this morning, I kind of want to reflect, not just for myself, I think for all of us, I think in this journey, in this faith journey, uh, falling, uh, making mistakes, messing up, not hitting our aim and hitting our goal, uh, I, I don't think it's a surprise for most of us, uh, particularly if we grew up in the house of God and we try to pursue God. And I think the more, and this is a lesson that I've been learning, the more I, I want to make the effort to love God, the more I try to muster up my own strength to pursue the Lord, I find that I could keep up for a little bit, I could keep up for a little bit, and then after a while I realize the strength of the natural man cannot sustain my walk, right? And that's why the Word of God says, you know, we need to abide in Jesus. We have to abide in the Lord. And the Lord says, unless you abide in me, you can do nothing. And Pastor Yu has been sharing that, sharing that all my life. And I would tell you, I come to know it, I come to understand it. I really do understand it, but somehow... Just within my nature, I want to step back and say, okay, God, I got it. I got it. I can do this. And I think it's amazing, you know, Brother Chi Chen and uh, Brother Kyle and myself, we didn't really, you know, huddle up and say, okay, you share this, you share this. But our, our, our sharing this morning cultivates at, culminates at, at, at the same point of the fact that we all need to come and need Jesus Christ. We all need to come and draw near on the Lord. We need him, and we need to rely on him, and we need to look to him, who's my strength, who's my help. I picked a couple of verses. Uh, Stephen, I don't know if you could throw it up there, and I'll read it together. I try to use my iPhone this morning. You guys, I don't know if you picked it up, and I got halfway in reading my verses, and then it just, it just kind of didn't work. So I'm, I'm going to give up using this thing altogether. <clears throat> Go back to the written pages, the word, okay? Uh, I'd like you to read this, this psalm together with me, Psalm 120. And then we're going to jump to Isaiah chapter 40. Um, the psalm says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So this psalm, David cries out. He tells the Lord and he proclaims where his strength comes from. Brothers and sisters, again, I want to encourage all of us. I want to remind myself. Every time we want to have this notion of, I can walk this Christian walk, I need to come back and look at this. I need to come back and look at the one who sustains my faith, the one who sustains my walk every single day. I know there are a lot of young people here in this room. Maybe you haven't experienced quite what I'm talking about, trying to love Jesus with all your heart and then finding yourself failing and failing again and again. 
and this notion of needing to come back to Jesus and say, Jesus, you are my only hope. You guys didn't get that line. Jesus, you're my only hope. You're my only hope. You're the only one who can save me. You're the only one who can deliver me. You're the one, only one who can transform me, who could give me the true strength within. Okay, so we'll go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah cries out. This actually should echo for a lot of us, a lot of young men here, a lot of young women here. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brothers and sisters, this is my heart desire for me this coming year, for us as a church, the English ministry, the youth ministry, that we really become a people that learn how to wait on God that we become a people that really know how to pray. You know, we know these essential, fundamental elements that strengthens our faith. But brothers and sisters, we know it so well, but honestly, we don't practice them. We don't do it. I am just as fault, at fault. I know, I know my nature, like I was sharing with you guys, that I'm inclined to go back to my natural strength and serving God and worshiping God and following God and keeping up in my Bible reading and coming here and leading worship. But coming to realize I need to wait on the Lord. My strength comes from him. He is the only one who does not slumber, does not sleep. His strength does not fail. Our strength fails, but his strength does not fail. We can't go back into our own schemes, our own ways, our own intellect. You who are students who are studying, we who are work at, at our workplaces, you know, is so inclined. We've been trained. We've been trained so much to incline to go with our own strength with our own wisdom, with our own understanding, and even our own perception of what we think God is doing in our lives, and we try to work it out on our own. Brothers and sisters, it is essential. It is essential for us to learn to wait on Him, to wait on God. And this year, we definitely had a lot of challenges for the English ministry, uh, for the youth ministry. Uh, I temporarily stepped away from youth ministry and dumped the load on Uncle Chichen and Auntie Jennifer. And God has done wonderful work through our brothers and sisters. I see the youth really bearing fruit this year. You guys really have grown. I don't know if you see it. I don't know from afar. You're looking at yourself maybe, ah, not all that much. But praise God. Praise God. But the English adult ministry, we still need a lot of prayers. And I will tell you a lot of time, Brother Kyle and myself, we get together, we pray, we pray for the ministry. Sometimes, I tell you, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel just seems so small. Can't quite see it yet. And it requires that act of faith to look unto the Lord and say, God will make a way. God will make a way. And every time we look at the Lord and see what God has done, God has done an amazing thing among us. And I can't recount those things one at a time. But I want to ask everybody this year, Let's be a church that begins to pray on, get, pray on the Lord, to wait on the Lord, to look to him. Just one last illustration. And I was just reading last night, and I think you guys are all familiar with the story. This is not, don't walk away this place, brothers, with the notion that I'm telling you not to listen to your wives, okay? That's not the, 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 uh, the word that you need to walk away with. But I came, I read that story you guys are all familiar with, right? God came to Abraham and told Abraham, Abraham. Abraham, I'm going to give you a son, and your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in heaven, as numerous as the sand by the seashore. And Abraham said, yeah, okay, yes, Lord. And then after the Lord gave him that promise, well, nothing seems to have happened. And then somebody had a great idea. Sarah had a great idea. Sarah, be careful. Sarah had a great idea. Sarah says, Abraham, you know, Looks like nothing's going to happen. Doesn't look like anything's going to happen. There's no point keep waiting on this miraculous thing that God's going to do. Here, here's my mate servant Hagar. Go have a son through her, and maybe that's God's promise. Oh, my goodness. Great idea, guys. Well, if you think for Abraham at that point, at that spot, well, it kind of makes sense, I guess. 
I guess God really didn't say how I'm going to get that son, I guess. Oh, my goodness. What a mistake, huh? So, brothers and sisters, don't go scheming God's way out. God will work out what God's going to work out. And then guess what? Abraham messed up. You know how long Abraham had to wait before God reappears to him? About 14 years. 14 years. 14 years later, God shows up. And the first thing God says to Abraham, Abraham, I am the Lord God Almighty. Walk before me. I am the Lord God Almighty. I am the all-sufficient God. I don't need you. I don't need your plans. I don't need your schemes. I don't need your ways. I can make it work. Abraham, trust me. But and sister, as we close this year, as we look forward to the next year, I pray, I pray, I pray. I ask you guys, particularly pray for the leadership at church. We need God's grace. We need God's grace. I'm not putting you guys down, but it's not easy leading God's people. It really isn't. We need God's grace. We need God's grace to come and humbly walk before him and to really rely on him and never rely on our own ability and our own strength. Amen? All right. With that said, Uncle Chi Chen, Uncle Chi Chen, please keep the paper right here. iPhone still works, so uh, <laughs> not all iPhones are the same uh, because uh, we haven't had a chance to set up a printer at my home, so I couldn't print anything yet. Hopefully, uh, that will be done today. Uh, so uh, we're talking about uh, bearing fruit. Um, so Jesus made the statement. He said, if you want to see or you want to know whether this tree or is good or bad, how? Very easy, right? You see the fruit, okay? That means, okay, it's very clear. That means that you will be able to tell and recognize the fruit, okay? It's not hidden. Yes, a lot of our, our walk with the Lord is hidden, okay? That's our inner life. But when it expresses itself, you will be able to see, okay? And right in the Philipp, uh, uh, Galatians 5, when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, also talk about the work of the flesh. So you, you get together with someone, after a while, you tell that there's tons of work of the flesh there, or there's a tons of the fruit of the Spirit there. You will be able to recognize, because that's what Jesus said. So I, I want to share with you, uh, you know, I, I remember this brother made that uh, testimony. He went to a meeting, and then after not too long, okay, and he sees that among the leaders in the meeting, these are the group of people, they walk under the rulership of someone who is higher. It's divine. They recognize that, okay? And on the other hand, it's also true when Jesus said that, you know, uh, I in you, okay? So people should be able to see, hey, I see Christ in you. This time when I was up in Seattle, uh, gathered with some relatives, they took a photo of the group photo, sent it back to Taiwan, one of my cousin, and then just quickly, you know, WeChat back, not WeChat, line back and say, hey, Chi Chen, your son looks exactly like you, okay? And then <laughs> people see Chi Chen in Samuel, okay? Because you, you see, so this, this point I want to make, if you are born of Christ, it should be natural people see, I see Christ in you. I can recognize the fruit then I know the tree is good, okay? And then I want to share, uh, I remember uh, when I was praying what to, what to share, and the Lord reminded me of 1 John. When Apostle John, he addressed to three different groups. He says, little children, and then he said, young men, and also he said, fathers. So that speaks of our three levels of spiritual maturity in one sense. So I want to address two different groups this morning. So for the little children, Okay, sixth grader, uh, not only sixth grader, okay, some of you are, are con consider yourself young in the Lord, okay. I want to tell you what's important. <laughs> One thing, uh, you need to know 
the Holy Spirit. Okay? You need to spend time to get to know the Holy Spirit. He is the helper. Father send us, okay? Uncle Kyle, Father Kyle, you know, Uncle Chi Chen. We can try to help you. But Jesus gave you a perfect helper. Okay? When Jesus said, you know, I, you know, when Jesus was his, his disciples, everything was fine because Jesus is here, right? But when Jesus left, he said, I'm not going to leave you powerless or I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to give you a helper. Okay? He will help you every step through of your Christian walk. The moment you are born again, uh, Romans 8 says, if you, are, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you are none of His, okay? I trust most of you have the Spirit of God in you. You are born again. Then He is there. Jesus promised that I will send a helper to you, and He will be with you, okay? And He will be in you. That's the promise of God. That means He's always, always, always available there, okay? When you read the Scriptures, when you do your chore when you go to school, everywhere. He is there, and it takes you to recognize Him, to learn to listen to Him, to walk with Him. He is the only one who can guide you into all truth. So little children, you've learned a lot from your Sunday school in the children's center, but that's all head knowledge. That's not the reality. You need the work of the Spirit to lead you into that reality. So I would exhort you in this coming year, learn to get to know this one who is with you, who is in you. He's always accessible. And he will know. He, and Jesus said, you will know him. You know, you must, you, you must believe what Jesus said. He said, you will know him. The world does not know him. Of course, they don't know the Holy Spirit. But you shall know him. I hope that this year you, you remember what Jesus said. I will know him, Holy Spirit. I will know you, okay? You help me. As Uncle Will shared that uh, you need the power to go, to walk this, to live this Christian life. Where does that come from? Okay, Jesus, I will not leave you powerless. He will help you. Now I want to move on to the young man. So many of you, you do taste the work of the Holy Spirit, Okay? Uh, in many conferences, special meetings, you go there, you feel with the Holy Spirit, you know God is so real to you. But you wonder why when people look at you, like I said, you, they spend some time with you after a while, say, this, I, I, I feel there's tons of work of the flesh, not the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? Even though you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, even, right? I thought maybe you can consider this. Let's say uh, a little cup, okay? You can be filled with the water, but just a little, little cup, okay? Uh, uh, you can be a glass, you can fill the water, and then you can drink. That's nice. Okay. Or you can be a bathtub, right? There's a lot of water. You can even jump there, not jump there, but you can take a bath there, okay? <laughs> or, like Jesus said, you can be the rivers of living waters. Rivers of living water. You see the different measure, okay? So when I look at many of you young men, including young women, <laughs> and uh, uh, yes, you have the Spirit of God. Yes, you do know the Spirit of God. Yes, you are filled from time to time, but your vessel is so, 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 so tiny that people can hardly recognize the life of Christ in you. So how do you grow that vessel? How do you grow? How can you enlarge your vessel? I want to encourage you this year, the Word of God, okay? Jesus said, you do not live by bread alone. I'm afraid many of us, we live merely by bread alone, okay? We don't read the Bible for a week and two. We don't feel anything. But God says, no, you do not live by bread alone, but by every, mouth, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So I encourage you this year, you know, many of you, I know why, how you feel. You read the scripture, you do your chore, chore, check off. You don't feel anything, okay? But God does not say you will feel anything. And Bible never emphasizes feeling, okay? He wants you to have faith first. 
and those will come later. So I encourage you this year, you just resolve in your heart, say, Lord, I'm such a tiny, tiny, tiny vessel. I can contain some, some, some water, but I'm not satisfied. I want you to enlarge me. Okay? There's no shortcut, young men, young women. You may think you can go to a thousand conferences. Okay? That will not make you larger. They will cause you to be more hungry. Yes, I agree. But in order for you to grow, you need the Word of God. And you need to read it, meditate on it by faith. Okay? The Almighty God only gives you and me this book. Okay? And if you ignore this book, if you don't spend time to study it, don't blame on anyone else. You are not growing because you are not willing to pay the price on this Word of God, okay? And finally, I want to address the, the fathers, those who are older here. Uh, I'm not super old, but probably among this congregation, a little bit of age. Uh, uh, so we walk with Jesus. We, we, we study this word. And uh, so in some way, God is using us, using you. Uh, but you may feel to a certain point, you kind of hit the block, okay? You hit the wall. It, 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 as if there's a bottleneck there. What comes out of you? Yes, you do help others. Uh, people are blessed. You serve. But somehow, somehow, what comes out of us is not that water of perfect purity, okay? There's a huge difference. Uh, uh, I know some godly men and women. I, I, I spend time with them. I can sense what comes out of them is so pure, 